Hello students, Mr. Grawl here. Today we're going to talk about one-point perspective. Now in one-point perspective, all parallel lines appear to be going back to the same vanishing point found on the horizon line. Horizon line is found at your eye level. Let's take a look at this uh, photograph here and uh, we'll notice that if we follow this track here to where it disappears, we have established our vanishing point at uh, this point on the horizon. Now anything that's parallel to it above it appears to come down to it, like the tops of these buildings. And the thing about one point perspective is that one side of the building, there is no distortion because it's not going back into the picture plane or it's not going away from the viewer, like the sides of the buildings here. Or this line is not distorted, it's vertical. This line's not distorted, it's horizontal. Because this side of the building's not going away from the viewer, but this one is. So these lines will appear to be going to a vanishing point. In this case, the each successive house gets smaller and smaller, but it falls within these lines here, which go to the vanishing point. And this is very traditional to show how van, um, perspective works. It's having the railroad track going off into the distance, unobstructed, where it's a, where you're able to see clear to the horizon. This is your horizon line. And where the lines intersect on the horizon line, that is your vanishing point. And this is the same deal here. Now in this case, the artist has left a lot of the guidelines uh, indicating uh, his thinking. And of course, as I said before, any sh shapes that aren't going back into the picture plane, they, they are not distorted. In other words, this is a true 90 degree angle here because this side of this sink is, is not going back in space. But this side is. So where these lines, where these parallel lines intersect, this should be the vanishing point. And then all other lines that are parallel should appear to go to that point. Lines that are above eye level appear to come downhill. And lines that are below the eye level appear to come up to that vanishing point. Now, Artists before the Renaissance weren't aware of these principles, so there was quite a bit of distortion in their drawings. I think you can see by establishing a vanishing point, it'll make it infinitely more easy to get your drawings in proper perspective. And same with this, the tops of the building the bottom of the buildings, you establish your vanishing point. These telephone poles also should be constrained within this vanishing point. And the side of the building, because it's one point perspective, this line should be horizontal and not distorted. This path is going off in this direction towards some vanishing point. And then it hooks to the left and goes to a different vanishing point. And this is the drawing we're going to try to do in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and get a new file up here. We'll do it about a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. We'll leave it at 72 resolution and we'll just call this trailer and we'll say okay to that we'll go ahead and maximize it 
and temporarily we'll just fill it with some kind of background color and then we'll start our drawing let's go ahead and make another layer the first thing we'll do is we'll make the steps I'll get a little darker gray here and we'll start with the rectangle tool and we don't need transparent anti-aliasing on the edges so we'll go ahead and turn that off and I'll hold down shift to get a true square and release that let's go ahead and zoom in and we'll work on making those stairs I'm going to hold down alt and drag on this and we'll make four of them doing an alt drag duplicates the shape I'll hold down the space bar to pan down and then I'll go ahead and hold down alt and fill in the rest here I'll leave a little gap and use my arrow key to arrow in and we get three more and then we have the side of the steps done and another one and one last one and this should come over one more so good let's put all these on the same layer you have a whole bunch of them let's turn the background off click on one of these visible step layers and we'll go ahead and merge visible using this key right here okay now once we have them all on the same layer here the um, it'll make it much easier to work I'm gonna go ahead and hold on alt with the zoom tool and zoom out and maybe move this over here someplace now the next thing I want to do is kind of establish my point of view and so let's go ahead and name this layer this is going to be the steps and we'll make another layer where we establish the vanishing point now once you make your vanishing point there's going to be no moving it because everything has to stay in, in perspective I think I'll use the color red to establish my vanishing point and I'll just get a, um, a very thin and hard edged brush and just make a small dot here maybe even make it smaller that's nine pixels I'll just get it done about three or maybe a little bit bigger now we want to be able to have a good point of view here so I click right about there and that's going to be a little hard to see let's see if we can see with this background hopefully you'll be able to see that maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger six pixels there we go now I'm going to use the lasso tool I think I'll zoom in here to start constructing the part of the steps that go away from you so I'm gonna go ahead and holding down alt Let's see if I can get this to work okay that's working and let's hold down alt you know I think I'll start on the bottom here I'm all clicking using the lasso tool and then I'll release and then I'll sample this color and go a little bit lighter and go ahead and fill that I'll delete okay good I'm gonna go ahead and and trim it right away okay one little mistake I did make is I made it on the same layer that the vanishing point was on so 
easily fixed. Let's lock this layer so that doesn't happen again. There's a lock here, so I won't be able to draw on that. If I try to use this layer again, as it will say, cannot do it because the layer is locked. So now it's locked, I won't make that same error. So let's go ahead and do that again. Holding down Alt. And I'll go ahead and fill that. I'll deselect it by using a selection tool and clicking. And then I'll go ahead and trim it with the rectangular selection tool. And there we go. So we got our work cut out for, our, for ourselves. Holding down Alt. I'm going to continue in the same way. And rather than doing the top step, I think I'll do the side and then I can stay with the same color because that side step will be getting the light in an equivalent kind of way and then I'll go ahead and trim that as well now this to trim it properly I'm lining it up with the edge of this and then bringing it over and then hitting delete all right a couple more I'll delete deselect Get the rectangular marquee tool and let's get it right here and move it right up over until where we intersect with the next one we hit delete and then we got one more and then we'll put the tops on over back here click let up on alt alt delete Deselect by clicking, get the rectangular tool, line it up here, slide it over. And go ahead and hit delete. And then we'll continue on with the top portion. And I'm going to sample this color and go a little bit lighter so it'll show up against the background. And I think I'm going to do these on a different layer. I think it may make it easier for me to trim these by having them on a different layer. There we go. And three more to go. Holding down Alt once again. Back up here. Down to here. Release. Alt Delete to fill with that color. Click to deselect. Get the rectangular marquee tool. And line it up carefully. Hit delete. Two more to go. Holding down Alt once again. Back to the vanishing point. Back to the beginning of the step. Release. Alt delete to fill. Deselect by clicking with a selection tool. And delete. And then finally let's do the top and then we'll have our steps done. Alt delete and then I'm going to go ahead and click 
and shave that off. Hit delete. And these are on a different layer. So I'm going to go ahead and merge those down. So everything's on the same layer. Steps, my vanishing points here. And my steps are here. Good. Let's go ahead and zoom out and think about what we got to do next. Let's make the skirt of the trailer next. So I'm going to make another layer here and I'm going to call it skirt. And I am going to need some guidelines. So I'm going to make another layer here and call it guides. And these are going to be vertical guides, not vertical, excuse me. They're going to be diagonal guidelines that are going to help me construct uh, the trailer. So I'm going to go ahead and get the line tool. Looking up at the line tool, I have three buttons up here for path, clipping group. I just want pixels, so I'm clicking here. The weight, six pixels would be fine. And because they're going to be diagonal lines, I'm going to need some transparent smoothing some semi-transparent pixels on the edge so it doesn't look too stair-steppy. So I'm on the guides layer and the skirt is going to go right through the bottom of the step and I think I will use red for vanishing points and guidelines. And I'm on the guide layer so let's try that again. And then I'm going to go to the to the top of the stairs like so. And I think those lines are a little bit thick. So what I'm going to do is make go down to four pixels. I want them thick enough so you can see them, but I don't want them so thick where I can't draw well. All right, so that's going to be the basic shape of my skirt. I'm going to go back here and using that for a guideline, I'm going to hold on Alt and kind of trace it and I'll turn off the guides for a minute and decide what what color I would like this and I think I'm going to go for kind of a off green here and there we go and let's put them underneath the steps and I think I would like those a little darker so I'm going to go to image adjust hue saturation and maybe desaturate it a little bit. And that'll be it. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim it. I'd like the end of my trailer to be right about there. And I would like this to have a little bit of texture. So I'm going to go to Filter, Texture, Texturizer. And we'll try, maybe we won't do texturizer. We'll come back to this a little later um, where I can think about what texture I would like. Okay, we're going to continue on. Um, the guidelines here, we don't need those anymore, so we'll go ahead and delete those, those, those guides. Hitting delete. And then I'll go back to red and make some more guidelines for the rest of the trailer. Go ahead and deselect. And this would be the, maybe we'll go a little higher than that. The trailer itself. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and make another layer here and just call this trailer.
Holding down Alt, I'll follow my guidelines. And we'll go ahead and fill, I'm going to fill that in with this color. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim that as well. I don't need those guides anymore, so I'm going to the guide layer and deleting those. And then I'm going to go to the trailer layer here. I'm going to hold on control and pull it down just a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and trim it. And I want these to match up, so I'm going to trim that trailer again. And then we have the, the top of the trailer, the trim for the top. And I don't think I'll need a guideline. I'll just follow these lines. And then I'll go ahead and uh, trim that. Now I was thinking what kind of texture I could use here, and I'm thinking maybe possibly a layer style of some sort. So I'm going to try a... pattern overlay. And I don't think I'll go with those. I'm going to try a bevel. I think I'll scale it up. There, so I think I'll go with this bevel idea. To me, that looks kind of like a stone, so I'm going to go ahead with that. Now, the next thing I would like to do is make some make a door. So I'll go ahead and make another layer and name it door. And I'll go back to my guide layer and get red and draw out a red line to where I want my door to be, right about there. And then I'll just drag out some guidelines from the ruler. You bring your ruler up by doing Control R, and you can drag from them to get vertical lines. And uh, I'll go ahead and use that those guidelines to I'll make a, go back to the door layer, put it up on top, and I'll follow those lines. To make the door. Go and I'll fill that with some kind of door color. And we'll do 
do an alt delete to fill. And I'll add some noise to it. And make it monochromatic noise. And we'll do a little motion blur on it. And we'll head north and south with this blur. Give it a little sense of a door. And then maybe we'll bevel it. Layer, layer style, bevel and emboss. And uh, we'll reverse the, the bevel so you get the shadow in the corner here. I'm going to go back to my guidelines and get rid of that guideline. Now it'd be nice to have a couple windows. So let's make another layer for a window. I'm going to go back to my guides to make the guidelines for the window. I'll go back to red as well. I'm going to make the width just three pixels, maybe make it a little easier for me to work with and I'll have the windows maybe go a little higher than the door in the bottom right about here and then I'll use some vertical guidelines to construct them so this will be my first window and I'm going to use the lasso tool to follow it. And by holding down Alt, I can go from point to point. And I messed up, so try it again. Okay, that'll be, have to be good enough. And I'll just fill it in with a light yellow color for now. And I'm going to go ahead and trim it. It's not exactly right. There we go. I wanted that to go look like it was really going to the vanishing point. I think I'll bevel this as well. And we'll do a, a downward bevel and get a little shadow up here. Now the the window, each window will be success successively smaller in height, but also in width too. And I'm just doing this by eye. And I'll make another layer here. And I'll try to follow these lines. It's a little hard to do because my cursor is so close to the same color, the same value. That's hard for me to see. <clears throat> and I'm going to trim that as well. So it looks like it's going to the vanishing point. And I'll bevel that. I'll reverse it. And then I'll do one more window. And as I said before, they'll be success, successively less tall and successively skinnier. All right, I'm having a little hard time 
seen. There we go. That does not look spaced right. I'm going to go ahead and undo that and move my guidelines over. So I know visually it, lo it looked wrong. This is really hard to, to see. So what I'm going to do is turn this off temporarily just so I can see what I'm doing. I'll go back to Make a layer here so I can fill it. And that doesn't quite mate up with what this is, so I'm going to go ahead and trim it. So it looks like it goes with the other window. And I'll give that a bevel. I'll reverse the bevel. And maybe we'll do one more, another layer. And we'll bring some guidelines over. That's a little bit off as well, so I'll go ahead and trim that. I think I'll get the bottom of it too. And I'll go ahead and give that a bevel. And I'll reverse it. And I'll go ahead and turn the um, trailer back on and we'll give this trailer a little bit of texture filter texture texturizer and we'll give it a sandstone Just increase the scale on it okay let's get rid of some of these guidelines so let's go to, to get rid of the guidelines. We'll go to view and we'll clear the guides. And we'll go to our diagonal guide layer and delete those. We don't need those anymore. And I am going to trim. I have auto select layer on so I'm going to click here and I'm going to trim each of these layers and then I'm going to click here on this layer and then click here to go to that layer and just trim those three now let's make a layer underneath everything and give it a little bit of grass And I'm just grabbing this, and I think I'll do a gradient from, oh, maybe a dark green to a lighter green. And we'll use the gradient tool. We'll use a linear gradient. All right, that's kind of the way I'd like it. I'm going to add some noise to it. Filter, noise, 
add noise and then we'll go ahead and give it a motion blur and then we'll probably sharpen it a little bit filter sharpen unsharp mask Okay, let's get a little background. Let's go back here and get some cloud colors. We'll just go with blue and white. And we'll do a filter render clouds and see how that looks. And then maybe we'll just draw something off in the background, like some mountains or something. Go to layer, layer style. No, we'll go to image adjust hue saturation and play with that a little bit. And I think I'll burn and dodge that a little bit. Burning darken, so I'm just gonna, that's a little bit too much. I'm gonna just darken this up at the top. And maybe on the grass, I'll do a little uh, dodging and burning as well. Dodge, of course, lightens. And burning will darken. And I think I'll make a cement walkway that goes across here, so. There's going to be no perspective here, so I think I'll just do it something like this. And fill it in with the same color here. And just trim that down. Looks kind of bright. I'm going to go to image adjust hue saturation and darken that a little bit. And it might have some lines going across it, so I'm going to get a little darker gray here. And then I'm going to go ahead and clip this into the sidewalk by holding down Alt. And then I'll go ahead and merge that down. Now one last thing is the grass should come up above the sidewalk and above the house. So what I'm going to do is go to the skirt and I'm going to start there and I'm going to make a mask and I'm going to hide part of the skirt so it looks by painting with black. I'm going to hide some of the skirt. I want a soft brush to do this. I'm going to look for a nice soft brush. 
and it's going to hide the skirt and it's going to make the grass appear to come up over the skirt. I'm going to go to the same thing, make a mask, go back and get my brush, I'm going to put the grass, what I'm doing is hiding this, now it worked here, something's going wrong here, oh, because of the white thing, so let me get rid of that there, I'll hold on, all. go ahead, and Make sure I'm on that layer and delete that. Then I want to go to the sidewalk layer here, mask that as well. Go back to my brush. All right, that finishes up the project. Now some of the things that I talked about was masking and uh, when you mask you hide. Let me click on this building here maybe I can demonstrate that a little bit more. When you make a mask and you use that button right here you can use black to, to, to paint away and then you can use white to bring it back. So black hides and white reveals. So on this part, what I'm doing is, is you can see through to the sky. Now you can see through to the grass. But if you paint with white, it just paints it right back. So black will hide the whatever you click on. And white will reveal, reveal it. All right, so thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. God bless and good luck with Photoshop. Bye-bye. Mr. Grawl signing off.